All right, guys. Uh, just a uh, figured. Um, I was either going to. It's um, what's today? Today's Wednesday, so I was either going to send you guys a note, um, like a midday note. But you know, there's just uh, it's tough for me to really send out a midday note on you know like trade ideas when um, when we've got the Fed right in front of us. So I just thought it would be better to um, you know just kind of go through the charts because we do have some uh, some developments in the in the price action uh, for today. We're down another sixty basis points. So I figured um, before we kind of uh, and you know I'm happy to take any questions or if anybody actually wants to um, chime in and talk about what they think that we're going to see uh, for the rest of the afternoon. Um, I'm open to uh, to hear that and to kind of uh, talk through uh, because we've got just under an hour to go. Um, interesting, like, it, so, you know, it, it's sometimes um, I'm trying to think of the right, uh, the right term for these pictures. When you were a kid, did they ever show you like uh, the um, like a is a painting or a picture, and you look at the picture one way, and like there's one where there's an old woman, and you look at the picture the other way, and there's a young woman, right? This is kind of like the the um, some of these charts that you look at, especially when you go from one time frame to the other. But clearly, uh, you know, so the one the one thing that I see when when you look at this picture is first of all we're in a downtrend and you know for the most part we've been making lower highs and we don't know if this is another lower high before i would say whether or not like you know that this is definitely going to be another lower high is i would watch basically the 50-day moving average uh and really besides the 50-day moving average i would be watching 3790 so we could come in and test that and if we hold it it's fine if we break into that then i think we've got another lower high on our hands and, and we, and we have a mess. Um, so that's where we are. Things that we, you know, things that we do know is that November is a better seasonal month, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be the driving force of this month. It's really, you know, Powell can set the stage. I am a little bit, uh, I'm worried. I think that uh, of what Powell is going to uh, is going to say or going to do because I think there's been too much of this this uh, pivot talk and I'm afraid that the expectations are too high going into this thing. I don't think that this is a good like I I, I don't think he's going to say anything positive. So if that now maybe my maybe my expectations are you know being low is maybe I'll get we'll get pleasantly surprised with something but i i just don't think how you could be positive without any without seeing any evidence of inflation cooling unless he talks about unless he goes into his speech and says something like they are seeing inflation cooling outside of what the cpi measures uh, or you know or maybe he you know the other thing is like uh, and this is getting a little bit in depth but i i just don't we've talked about this before i'll i'll say it again since covid happened a lot of these businesses, you know, and especially what like the jobs measures, the jobs data measures, like, you know, if you if you're a restaurant and you struggled to get workers, like if you were in a major deficit where you couldn't, you know, and this is what happened to, to many restaurants is they, they couldn't find the staff. So now are, are, are now that they maybe have secured a staff. Right. Are they going to go ahead and just start cutting people when it took them so long to actually get the workers? You know, so maybe they do something where they shuffle their their, um, you know, everybody works less hours. But I, I think like that's one of the things that is my guess. And I'm not going through these numbers. You know, I'm not an economist and I'm not going through the numbers, but I just have major doubts on on how this employment number is going to come down. Which is which is what a good chunk of so that's the one so that's the one thing is how in the world is employment going to go down when many of these companies aren't going to give up workers after it was so hard to attain them. Number two, when you look at rents, right now that mortgages are sky high, people are probably what are people going to do? Um, because if you were thinking about buying a house, now it's going to cost you significantly more. So you're probably going to continue to rent. So how is that going to bring down rent prices? I don't, I don't know. For those two, for those two things, everything else is, 
you know, is a little bit more straightforward, but, you know, so the, the, so the question I guess comes from that is, is, is Powell going to, and I, I hate the word that used to use that word pivot, but is, but is he going to get over the fact that you may, he just may not be able to get this and without really crushing the economy, he may not be able to get that unemployment number up because, I think, like I said, businesses are reluctant to fire people and reduce headcount because of what co- the challenges of COVID. And, um, you know, so that that's my take. Um, but, it, it, you know, I, I like even with this inflation report that comes out in a couple of weeks, what is going to cause this inflation to come? Like, you know, bring this up for the 10th, which is when we get the next inflation data. But like, how is this number going to come down? Because I, I don't, we just had Jolt's jobs openings, which were very high. So I don't know. I don't really see much changing. So the question is, is the Fed going to come to terms with that some of these data points are just not going to change in the short term? Um, so, or is he like, hey, we've just got to keep raising interest rates. So I, that's why I'm, I don't think he's going to come to terms with that there's a, that there's structural issues with the Labor Department, uh, which is what I refer to with the situation with COVID and not being able to get workers. So I, that's a structural, that's a change in, in structure. And I don't think that... Um, the Fed is going to change their mind that quickly on that. So um, this is what I tweeted out. Um, I don't know if now that there's a few of you in here, but anybody know what the, where I grabbed this picture from? So I put Powell getting ready. Um, and anybody know what this with this uh, where I where I stole this picture from? There was a um, there was a Netflix documentary on it. Anybody? No. All right. That's one get. That's not a guess, but that's a no. Um, anybody else know? Have any idea what this picture is from? Woodstock. Yes. So it's from uh, Woodstock '99. It's a. It's a pretty interesting doc documentary that was on. Um, I did not go to that. Um, I remember. I had some friends that were thinking about going to this, but if you didn't watch the Netflix, the Netflix special on Woodstock 1999, it was a complete disaster. Um, it was in the middle of the summertime. They, they had the, uh, they had this event at a, uh, they, they completely like fooled the kids who bought tickets to this. There wasn't sufficient uh, uh, water and they had this in the middle of the summertime. It was like at an old airport. So it was all blacktop and um, everything was extremely expensive. So what happened and then they booked the guests that they booked were your your ve like heavy metal, almost heavy metal type bands. Um, so this was Limp Bizkit. Um, who was performing and it ended up being like a disaster so <laughs> the question is 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 like powell in the mood to like create you know to basically knock knock asset prices down again and to to cool things and i, I i'm afraid of this i'm afraid that he's gonna do <laughs> he's gonna do something like this because this was Limp Bizkit. Instead of settling down the, the crowd, they basically poured lighter fluid on the, on a fire, <laughs> and like you know, so that there was there was major like mosh pits going on and so forth. So that's my little analogy today. Is this what Powell has in mind for today? Yeah. Um, so let's look at a cut. So that said, I mean, that's what I'm I'm very mindful of. So I think. So let's talk about a couple scenario analysis. If if he is going to be um, hawkish in that manner, right? Let's get away from the Limp Bizkit uh, reference. If he's going to be hawkish, right? Probably things like you know more of the of the arc stuff, right? The higher growth names they're going to continue to get hit. Um, if he comes out and he's somewhat has somewhat of a dovish tone, then those things are probably going to go up. 
right? And uh, again, if and and what will probably hold up better is more value type stocks. Um, I would think if he's hawkish, and um, yeah, I, I so I think like you know an energy play, you know, even though the energy names have been up so much. Um, things of that nature will probably hold up a little bit better, I, I would imagine, if he comes out and he's really hawkish again. All right. And of, and of course, if you attended the pre-market session, um, I talked about this, um, that many of you after the last Fed meeting were, were like, why did I even try to trade this? So I think that was a very good conclusion. He could, I mean, I don't know, you know, I mean, that's the other, that's the old, other wild card. You think, the, um, it, it, you know, you know, and it's not just Biden. There's been a number of other um, congressmen who have been sending letters uh, <laughs> to, to, um, to Powell to say like, stop with the raising of, um, of interest rates. I don't know if he's going to listen to them. I, I mean, this is a political thing. So you bring up a great point, right? That's the other point to this is if he is dovish. So, um, you know, so we don't, you know, so I think that you kind of have to get ready for some type of whipsaw move that plays out one one way or another. Um, the other thing to like, so again, I like to get you guys pre prepared so that at least, you know, like what could come. Remember that we see a lot of times whipsaw moves. So at two o'clock, right, which is 40 minutes away, right? This is what could, yeah, turning faucets on too early. Is, yeah, I mean, I don't, th I agree. I don't think that they, that they want to do that because they've said a couple of times that they, they don't want to, um, they don't want to change their viewpoint until they actually see the inflation go down. I, I agree with that comment. Um, but um, so you, you may see something like this today, right? Or some again, it won't be exactly like this, but you could see some some major whip, whipsaw move today. So here's what happened. You know, this is um, wasn't exactly uh, the last Fed meeting. The prices were up. So this is just a this is just a chart of a, an intraday chart of spy back on September 21st, and we started the day higher. Um, we imme immediately sold off on the announcement, and you know, a couple of the headlines that crossed the tape at two o'clock. Uh, and then once Powell started to speak at 2.30, this market started to rally pretty decently. Um, and the reason why the first thing that he started to go over was that he he saw weakness in real estate. And the market was like, hey, this is great. Um, and then he started to take questions. And he then proceeded to say that the employment, which I just was going over, that the employment needs to come in. Um, and that they need to see weaker, weaker jobs numbers. And that's when the market really started to change directions and then just kept going. So that was how he, you know, and it was like, oh, that's a big change. He's, he's really hawkish. He wants to see more damage. So that was the last meeting on, on um, September 21st. And we have not, and these are the facts. We really haven't seen the CPI report come in. We haven't seen the jobs numbers be really weak either. So that's why I'm worried about this afternoon. All right. So any questions so far or other comments on, I'll go through a couple charts, but as I mentioned, that's one thing that, you know, I see lower highs right now. Um, I would give this thing a chance to kind of back and fill and see if we can um, find support. Uh, this is the 20 day moving average and the top of value, as well as you got the 50 day moving average, how this looks on the one hour chart is we've broken into value. We're we're kind of holding in here. This is why I have this 200 period moving average on my chart, right? Some people like the anchored VWAP and so forth. I think the 200 period moving average does a really good job. You could see since we've since we got over this, right? And here's where we made our lows, right? We got above this, we tested it in here. We went a little bit under it. We actually tested the top of value. This was a couple of weeks ago, right? We tested that and we blasted off from that point, right? Back test, hold. We come in here again. Um, we didn't go down to the bottom value, but we went back into this 200 period moving average and we held. So right now we're, <laughs> we got a decision here. You know, we're testing uh, this line. And if this breaks, 
we're going to go down to 3796 i would think all right the other thing that you have to worry about too so if you're looking for a so i'll kind of talk about a couple things that you could do if you're looking for a short for today what i would say and again if and by all means if you don't want to trade this day don't trade it it's very very tricky but I'm just giving you some ideas so that you can kind of think about things. But if we rally up to here, right, on the first announcement, this may be a place to say, okay, uh, you know, if, if you had some shorts on and you, or like you want to hedge your portfolio, I would maybe hedge into 38.75. That's going to be difficult for price action to, to get back above, All right? So that's where if you wanted to, like, let's say, press a short um you maybe think about on a rally back you know on a whipsaw move back up to 38.75 right and then of course if price takes this out and goes higher then then you got to cover that short um so that's what i see for s p uh 37.96 38.75 nasdaq um nasdaq has already gone through like i, I thought this might set up today for a move down to uh, bottom of value, but we've already done that. We've already broke broken through. Um, you could also look at that VPOC down there. That's a that's at 11, 11 102. Nasdaq is probably going to be the most sensitive thing, right? Dovish, it probably rallies the most. Uh, hawkish, it um, at least takes out that VPOC down there, right? And then of course um, the Russell, which you could have traded this even, you know, before, uh, you know, before we have any information, but we did break into the value area and the 80% rule is now active. That's another thing too, this, you know, if, if super hawkish, um, you know, maybe this strength in small caps comes undone, um, considering that we're already in the value area. All right. So that's what I would want. That's what I would say to watch, depending on like what kind of, um, you know, we don't know, obviously, what kind of headlines we're going to get, but, you know, if we rally right back into the top of value, then you probably want to be taking profits there, or you know, or the possibility of reestablishing a short, right? Like the main thing I would use these value areas for is to, you know, it's a it's a nice technical roadmap for you. Like you don't want to be adding, you know, in my opinion, as we like price gets right up to the top of value. That's usually where you want to be taking taking targets. Um, so I, I would say like with this value area, if you wanted to play a short, I just said that NASDAQ would probably be most sensitive, but I think from the technical perspective on this one hour chart, um, I would think IWM might have the furthest to go down on a technical basis, right? So I could look at something, um, we, let's bring up IWM rather than Russell futures, right? Do you guys want to cover like a trade idea or two? Um, there's also... Uh, we're also down to this point of control. But I, I would say, like, if, if you're going to do this, if you're going to think about a trade, um, I, I would try to risk the least amount of money. Um, because I think the option prices are jacked for this event. Remember, any type of event, usually there's some type of a vol crush. Remember, and like if I know I'm going to get questions about the VIX later, if the market goes down and the VIX goes down today, that's that's because of the event, right? It's just like an earnings event. Um, what happens when a name reports earnings? Like as we're in the middle of earnings season, right? The volatility is much higher than normal because you have a big event. And after the after that event is known, like after an earnings event, the volatility in that option comes crashing down. Right. So that's what will happen to some extent, I would think, to the like. So don't be surprised if you see the if the market ends up down today and the VIX also is down today. It's because of the event come the the event is now known. Right. That's how that's how volatility works. Sometimes people don't grasp that, but that's how it works. Um so what what is the move for today for IWM? Let's that's always the first thing I'm I think to talk about so 170 for today's because again there's there's options that expire today it's always good to see what the market is pricing in 
right? So if you take, uh, so the market's pricing for IWM about a 2% move right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, and what would that be if I'm looking for a downside uh, put fly? Well, that's very close. That's actually lines up perfectly. So the market is pricing in, uh, what did I just say about a 2% move? And the, that gets you down to about 177.50. That's right around the bottom of value. So uh, I'm going to look at that trade right now. Uh, IWM is 180. So you could do, is that 180.88, excuse me. So I would want to target that 177 strike. So I could do something like a 179. So let's just price this out for a minute. So if I did the one, um, 179, I'm gonna target 177. Uh, 179, perhaps I should look at 180. Let's try this. Let's do one, 180, 178. And then my other strike will be 176. So that'll cost you about 30 cents to do that trade. Let's see what it is with the ones, if I go further down, just for curiosity. 179, 177, and that'll be 175. That's still about the same price. So I like the, um, the 180, 178, uh, 176 put fly for about 33 cents. Let's see if I can get into that. Oh, it's not letting me, oh, something's not right. All right, and filled. Okay, so so here's some protection um, for, and remember I did this, um, what was the other, oh, I did this, what, last week for earnings in case like an earnings disaster. So, um, and I got one target. I could have taken the whole trade off, but I was looking for something bigger. So put fly, and I'll go over this in detail if anybody doesn't know what the hell I'm doing. Put fly for today's expiration. All right, so this is what's called insurance, or of course you could speculate. For me, it's more insurance than anything else because I have a few longs on. Uh, let me just get this. Let's see. So this is today's for today's exp expiration. No second. One eighty. One seventy eight. One seventy six. Put spread. Throw this in here. All right. So um, now, so, you know, I'm fully okay with losing the 33 cents. Hopefully, like what I would hope for is, you know, because my portfolio is. I do have long positions in it. I want Fed, I want Powell to be dovish, right? I just don't know if that's really probable. But um, if he's not, then then I've got a down, I've got some downside uh, insurance. Okay. Um, so what you're doing with this like put fly, and and of course, like you could look up, take down my my Powell picture, <laughs> my uh, limp biscuit Powell picture. Uh, let's just bring this up really quick for you guys. Put fly. Um, diagram. Oh, what did I do with that? 
Sorry, bear with me just two seconds. Ugh. Whenever I move this over, this doesn't like it. This computer doesn't like it. There we go. All right. Um, so th this is basically how, how a fly works, guys, just in case that you don't know. But I would assume that most of you probably know what a put fly is. But basically, uh, what you're doing is three strikes. Um, you're in, in this sense, like I'm using the um, the 180, 178, 176. Those are the strikes. Really, I want the price to go to the middle strike. That's where you make the most amount of money in this. Okay. And um, so what you have to do is you have to buy, the, you know, you have to buy the, the um, 180 and the 176, and you have to sell twice as many as the middle strike. So again, the, the benefit of this is it doesn't cost a lot of money, only costs 33 cents. And if you get the, if you get the measured move in the direction right, it will really pay off for you, All right? I think so the most that I can make on this trade, like, um, let's see what I just do with this. Um, I don't know the the amount. Uh, I'll see if I can get that. Um, the um, the for thirty three cents. I I have to think uh, how much. Like I think it could go up to like. Um, Uh, I, I don't, I don't know the, the strike amount. I'll see if I can get that from, from E-Trade, but it, you know, so that's a great way to kind of play something where, where you're not putting on a lot of money. Um, any questions about that or any other questions? Um, I think overall, you know, make sure that you, you know, now that there's only about 20, uh, 27 minutes to go, make sure you go over your portfolio, right. And what you're holding right now. So I've taken off TMDX. Uh, I've taken off, um, I, I took my stop in TSCO. Um, I've also taken off Valero. Um, BTU reports earnings. Unfortunately, I, I thought this name would rally into earnings. It's not, I, you know, I could take that off. I also took off XBI this morning, right? So you can kind of see what I've done here, right? I've, as I talked about in the pre-market session, I've taken off some trades, and, you know, I'm comfortable with sitting with a couple. I've got to take off the CBX in a minute here, too, uh, which I have a day trade on, which I don't I don't want that day trade on into um, into the event. You know, so I've got a consumer staple on. I've got on AEHR, which isn't really where it was working a little bit this morning, but is not anymore. I'll probably sit with that trade. It's not a huge trade for me. But make sure that you go through this exercise of looking at what, you know, your positions are are. Um, you know, this is called, if you've got positions on, you've got risk on. So another thing too, is like, if you've got a couple of trades on and you don't want to take them off, you could also reduce the size of them, right? So you could, you know, take off half your position this way. You still have some skin in the game, or you could do something like I did, which I'm hedging to the downside. All right. Um, again, I would say, um, the takeaways from last fed meeting were I had some people in here were, that were like, I don't even know why I even tried to do this in terms of trading. So I'm not really looking to trade, you know, the put on any, do any major trading. Um, I've gotten to my positions where I want them to be and I am ready to go. Um, you know, but I'm not looking to, you know, I'm looking at this event more like a risk manager than, than trying to make money on it. Um, I, uh, the last thought that I'll leave you guys with too, unless you guys have any other questions is keep in mind. Um, and I talked about this in, in last night's p &L video. It is November 2nd, right? If you have a, a goal set for yourself for November and maybe even December at this point, right? This is not for me, like this is not a, something where I have any edge, I don't want to put myself on in a hole on this day, right? I, I think that let this event go by and then we can kind of see how it shakes out, right? That's the goal. Anybody want to add anything to that? I'm going to stop the video here.